Hi, and welcome to this production expert video about the brand new Genelec S360 monitors and the 7382 subwoofer. We're very lucky today to have Aki Makaverta with us to explain the unique features of these brand new monitors. So Aki, lovely to see you again, and lovely to see the new S360 monitors here, along with the 7382 subwoofer. Given the immense lineup and variety of monitors available with Genelec, what made Genelec feel the need for a more compact but high SPL monitor system? The, the un underlying reason for doing this really has to do with the people moving to more and more audio channels in their production. So we are now talking about immersive sound systems where you have uh, loudspeakers and multiple layers uh, around the listener. And clearly for this kind of uh, sound production environment, you have entirely new needs in terms of uh, monitoring loudspeaker construction. One of those is that you simply, when you have to fit in more loudspeakers into the space around the engineer, then they, the speakers have to be smaller. Yet at the same time, you really can't compromise the quality or the dynamic range that is audible in the monitoring loudspeaker. So you need more capable loudspeakers able to squeeze uh, the same quality and quantity of audio in a smaller physical space. When you came to designing these speakers, in particular the dispersion angles and such, were there any special considerations to you had to take into account when designing for immersive installations? In, in immersive uh, monitoring, uh, a lot of times you end up in a situation where you can't place all the monitors very close to the listener. You have a considerable distance from the monitor to the listener. So we need now these compact uh, monitoring loudspeakers that are also able to deliver uh, high quality sound from pretty long distances. This new S360 is able to deliver sufficient dynamic range from distances in excess of 10 meters. So in designing a speaker that's designed to be mounted in a variety of different formats to the usual freestanding or stand mounted, such as soffits, were there any special considerations? I noticed that you are using a very different port arrangement on these speakers than you have from your previous models? Yes, S360 is using two downfiring ports. And then we are also building in what we call the isopod in the loudspeaker that enables the low frequencies to breathe and radiate as, uh, so that uh, we can also deliver high, good linearity and uh, good amounts of uh, low frequency audio in those designs. Soffit mounting is quite a unique way of, of mounting a loudspeaker. Were there any other physical aspects that you had to take into account when designing these speaker systems? Yes, S360 is supporting uh, all possible methods of, it, of installing the loudspeaker in the room, including soffit mounting. We have uh, screw insert points that enable you to attach uh, mounting brackets, either horizontally or vertically, on the enclosure in order to use all the existing accessories that we have. And we also support uh, remoting of the amplifier in S360. Uh, there's a, a special remoting kit available that enables you to just simply take off the amplifier in the cabinet and then drop it in the rack mount box and then uh, install the amplifier safely in the rack and then use standard cabling between the, the amplifier and uh, the loudspeaker cabinets. So it's designed to be able to integrate into existing installations well then? Yes, it becomes easy to install. Uh, it doesn't require any, any special ventilation around the cabinet because the amplifier has been remoted and you can really very easily build it into using the standard methods and approaches. Were there any limitations you found going to a two-way system as opposed to a three-way system? Yes, uh, of course, for a three-way system, you would go to in order to make sure that you really are able to keep the distortion at all the different frequencies down to a minimum. When we started designing S360, obviously we want to keep up uh, the high quality of audio, despite the fact that we want to output high SPL levels. And in that situation, all the different design choices for the two-way design become critical, that your choice of drivers, the 
inherent linearity, the uh, dynamic range capability, and then also the way you integrate the high frequency radiator to the low frequency radiator. And we have a, a new method of building the directivity control waveguide and really integrating the, the high, high frequency driver into this system. And I noticed that there's no sharp edges on these speakers at all. So is that a, a specific design feature? Certainly, because we want to keep any sound coloring uh, diffraction effects away from this design. The deeper directivity control waveguide is aiding here quite a lot. And overall, if you, if you look at the off-axis responses for this design, they really do not have uh, coloration effects at all. They, you have very systematic behavior for this design. And I'm sure these uh, speakers, given the size they are, have a reasonably good low frequency extension response. So why did you feel the need to team them up with such a capable subwoofer in the form of the 7382? If uh, you think of just the challenge of building a physically small loudspeaker, maybe the biggest challenge you face at the low corner frequency, by making the enclosure small, you end, end up in a situation where you really have to work very hard to create low frequencies and even harder to create them in high quality. And then uh, in situations where you want to go extremely low, down to 20 hertz uh, or so, then you need some additional help if you want to reach the, the same maximum SPL level that you will be able to reach at mid and, and higher frequencies. And in that situation, uh, a, a well-working uh, subwoofer design comes in very handy. When it came to designing this subwoofer unit, uh, were there any special considerations for its possible installation? Yes, this uh, 7382 that we are using in this particular space here is a new design. It's intended for really the most critical applications where you need uh, a subwoofer that has uh, the smart technology included that enables the subwoofer really to align to the acoustics in the room and deliver very neutral low frequency output to the listening position. The 7382 comes with its own amplifier unit that is already uh, rack mountable. It uses standard cabling and this makes the subwoofer enclosure easier to install wherever it needs to go in the space. It is still quite a, a large unit, so how many drivers are in the uh, subwoofer? Oh, there are three 15-inch drivers in that design. And so what sort of frequencies can we get down to with that? Uh, uh, it, it works uh, over the standard frequency range, uh, going up to 120 hertz at, at maximum at high end, and then uh, to a, a quite uh, interesting 15 hertz uh, anechoic frequency at the low end. So if, when you stick this kind of device in, in a standard monitoring room, you really can cover all the low frequencies at very low distortion level. And that really is able to guarantee that you have the best possible rendition of uh, whatever has been recorded. Have you done anything special with the amplifier section for the subwoofer to take this need for dynamic range into account? Yes, uh, uh, 7382 uses Class D amplifier and um, it, it is really uniquely adjusted for each in individual enclosure so that you have a, a, a flat and neutral output from each individual 7382 device. So this is the standard thing we do with all our products at the factory. So when they are leaving the factory, each one of those is individually calibrated for maximal flatness and quality before it gets packaged. So with such a high SPL delivering from these units. How important is GLM in all this? Yeah, G GLM is a software. This is a software that is freely available. All you need in order to use that with uh, SAM products, smart active monitoring products, is a cable to connect uh, to the monitor and then um, the GLM kit that comes with a um, high-grade measurement microphone and adapter that connects to a computer. And then you just download the software to run the system. What the software does is that it acquires the real acoustics for every single loudspeaker and subwoofer in the space, and then it just figures out the corrections to bring each uh, monitoring loudspeaker and subwoofer to maximum neutrality in the space and aligns all the different uh, monitors with each other so that you have a, a well-working, balanced monitoring system. And it does that pretty fast. It takes a couple of minutes for a system to align itself this way 
And when you think of moving forward from a stereo system to a surround and immersive monitoring situation, then you can easily have dozens of monitoring loudspeakers in the space, many times installed in, in acoustically very different situations. And in, in that connection, GLM is excellent help to really enable people to work with this situation so that uh, you can have a reliable monitoring implemented uh, pretty fast in any space. In an immersive installation, would you recommend using the 7382 as base management or discreetly as its own 0.1 LFE channel? The 7382 really enables both methods of usage. It does support its own separate LFE input, so it can be used as a, as a dedicated LFE subwoofer. But it also supports uh, stereophonic uh, analog input, so out of the box it's able to support a stereo base management system using the, the GLM software. Also for the digital audio input, uh, you, you have the option of either using a stereo, a two-channel ASEBU inputs in the amplifier, or then, if you need that, we have another device, 9301, that expands the digital input to 7.1. So using GLM, we can base manage all the speakers in an installation, not just the front pair? Yes. Thank you very much, Aki. I'm, I'm thoroughly looking forward to uh, hearing these speakers in action, especially in an immersive setup. So uh, thank you once again, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.